Hello and welcome to Pint Glass Gaming. As always, I'm Gary. Today we're going to be talking about the newly released Resident Evil 8 Village. As this is one of my favorite video game series, we're going to do a short retrospective over the course of the entire series and then get into the review. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. Resident Evil started in 1996 on the PlayStation. The game took notes from the Alone in the Dark series with characters exploring pre-rendered backgrounds. Though Capcom didn't really invent the survival horror genre, they sure did popularize it. This was the first title I owned on the original PlayStation, and I've played through it countless times. Many of the conventions that we still enjoy today in the genre were established in this game, and it was the inspiration for many other, albeit subpar titles like Martian Gothic, or even Carrier on the Dreamcast. Resident Evil 2 expanded on pretty much everything that made the first game great. Claire and Leon are still absolute fan favorites, and I'll tell you, looking at the following footage, you never really forget how to navigate this opening sequence. The game had an A and B scenario for each character. Choices you made in the A scenario affected the other character in the B scenario. Hard choices had to be made, because if you took all the items with Leon, you're going to have a hard time playing with Claire in the following scenario. This was called zapping at the time. Of the classic RE games, this one is far and away the best. Though Resident Evil 3 introduced the now iconic nemesis, I never really got into it like I did the first two games. Sure, there were some improvements, the inventory management was handled much better, and you didn't need to press A to climb stairs anymore, but simply put, Resident Evil 2 is just better. Plus, Jill's outfit's pretty ludicrous. The first three Resident Evil games have all been remade from the ground up. Now, these games have established a new canon for the series. They're absolutely worth playing. Yes, even the Resident Evil 3 remake. But nothing quite captures my nostalgia like the classic games do. I recommend going for the classics. The series has reinvented itself multiple times over the years. Resident Evil 4 took the series into a much more action-oriented direction. Ammo conservation took a backseat to bullet-riddled carnage. The action was great, but quick time events have certainly not aged well, and the escort sections of the game are pretty frustrating. Don't get me wrong, I like Resident Evil 4, but it's not my favorite in the series. Ugh, oh, what to say about Resident Evil 5. Resident Evil 5 took the campiness that we all enjoyed in Resident Evil 4, but turned it up to 11, and introduced a team-based gameplay style that basically killed any tension. It was the start of a serious downturn for the series. Though a lot of fans were glad that series mainstay Chris Redfield was making his return to the main character spot, nothing this game could do, boulder punching aside, could save it. We don't talk about Resident Evil 6. In my lifetime, I have sold three games back to stores, and this is one of them. It's shit. It's shit. Resident Evil 7 took the series back to its survival horror roots. Ammo conservation was back, as was abject terror. Resident Evil 7 and Silent Hill 2 stand for my money as the scariest games in history. This game is also the first mainline game in the series to feature a first-person viewpoint. The game is an absolute masterpiece and should be required playing for pretty much everyone. It is here that we're introduced to Ethan Winters, who gets an email from his wife, who's been missing for three years. He sets out for the Bayou of Louisiana to reunite with his lost love and to get some answers as to where she's been. Nah, needless to say, it doesn't go very well. I can't recommend this game enough, and if you're really brave, try it with the PlayStation VR. Intense. This brings us around to Resident Evil 8. Footage for this episode is going to be captured on the Xbox Series X. Let's set the storyline up, spoiler free and all that. The game takes place several years after Resident Evil 7. 
Due to events in that game, our character, Ethan Winters, and his wife fled the U.S. to a small town somewhere in Europe. You start in a cozy European house, and your first task is to put your newborn baby Rose to bed. A child bedtime simulator without tantrums? Real as a minus 10 Capcom. Anyway, your idyllic family life is about to come crashing down. A group of mercenaries led by a familiar face break into your home. Do naughty things and take your baby daughter. Your task from this point forward is to rescue your daughter Rose. The story isn't exactly groundbreaking, but the way your journey mirrors a fairy tale story from the opening is a nice touch. Let's talk a moment about the graphics. There's no two ways about it. This game is Candyland for the eyes. The environments are some of the best I've seen on a console to date. Every area has a crazy amount of detail. Check out the lighting in some of these locales. Everything is photorealistic. From dark castle corridors to snowy mountain vistas, every light and shadow is purposely placed. The character models are truly impressive as well. From the basic lichen enemies to the rather insane boss fights, you're going to want to see more of the nightmarish creatures in the game. The graphics are super detailed, though some might argue a bit too detailed. Dinner was full. In terms of sound, I highly recommend playing this game with headphones. The groans of enemies, swing of weapons, and the sounds of gunfire make the atmosphere in this game incredible. There are a few jump scares that I think might lose their bite if you're not wearing the headphones. The lack of sound in the village area keeps you guessing about what's going to be around the next corner. There's nothing spookier than the whistle of the wind and Ethan's footsteps crunching along in the snow. When enemies do show up, the combat music is really effective in getting your adrenaline going. All in all, the sound design is expertly done. The game controls well, though, similarly to Resident Evil 7, Ethan walks painfully slow. You can upgrade his movement speed, but to me, he seems to go no faster than a brisk jog. This doesn't always work out when there's a mutant monster on your tail. Some enemies are really fast, and Ethan can't really keep up with them. The aiming is sluggish, though I think PC gamers will have an easier time with a mouse. Headshots are hard to pull off, but I guess that's the point. I generally suck to aiming at the center of enemy bodies, because a body shot is better than missing altogether. Gameplay is kind of a mixed bag. The game is short, even by my standards. My first playthrough on Hardcore difficulty took less than 10 hours. Subsequent playthroughs were even shorter, as I unlocked infinite ammo for most weapons. The game suffers from some uneven difficulty, as I breezed through most sections. The start of the game is undoubtedly more difficult than later sections, as I never really had any problem with ammunition or health management. There's an entire segment of the game that relies on psychological horror. There's no combat in this area, and you're not going to let a single round go as you make your way through. It was a clear departure from the usual Resident Evil formula, and though it was fun the first time around, it doesn't hold up at all on any additional playthrough. The boss fights, which I'm not going to spoil here, are memorable, but their weaknesses are very obviously telegraphed to you. A bit of a puzzle to figure out would have been greatly appreciated. In summation, the game is fun, though flawed, and in my opinion, the developers tried to take the best aspects of Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 7. In doing so, the experience of each was watered down, and fans of either may not be satisfied. As a bonus, once you beat the game, you unlock the Mercenaries mode. There are several stages to beat, and stringing together kill streaks nets you some seriously high scores. It's a nice distraction, though it lacks any real substance, and I don't really feel motivated to get the top scores when I have such a severe backlog of games. All in all, I don't regret buying or playing Resident Evil 8. It's a good game that you won't mind sinking a few hours into. It's not an instant classic, but I do award it the pint glass seal of approval. Now go rescue that baby. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Pint Glass Gaming, and we hope that you'll join us again. If you liked what you saw, please give us a like and subscribe. We've got a ton of new content coming your way, and we look forward to sharing it with you. Thanks!